Hi, my name is Leanna, and I'm going to show you how to take black and white drawings and colored drawings and colored paintings and turn them into Redbubble graphics, or graphics for whatever you want to put them in. Let's get to it. Okay, you guys, I don't know why there's redness on my neck in the video, because it's not there anymore, but let's just ignore it, even though I'm pointing it out right now. Ideally, it's nice to have a Wacom tablet or an iPad, and then you can use a pen tool or a stylus. Otherwise, I just use trackpads and my mouse for the pen tool on Illustrator, but however you wanna go about it, if you favor doing the physical drawings, paintings, or doodles, or you have stuff from before you got your tablet, I'm gonna show you how I go about turning those into graphics. First, I'm gonna show you how to turn black and white drawings into graphics. I'm just gonna use basic flowers as an example. After you finish your drawing, you'll wanna either scan it or take a good quality photo of it. Keep in mind, the darker your lines are, the easier the process is gonna be. So if you can go over it in a marker or a dark pen, that's gonna be ideal. For this black and white drawing, I'm gonna take a picture of it with my phone. You can also take a picture of it with a DSLR camera. You'll just wanna make sure that you have a good angle and good lighting that preserves the art and doesn't create glare or anything like that. You wanna be extra careful if it's a painting or something with color on it, but I'm gonna show you that next. So as you can see, when you take a picture, it's less than perfect. There's kind of a shadow on the bottom, which is why I definitely recommend scanning, but not everyone has a scanner. Luckily, in these programs, we can clean it up. My scanner was being kind of weird. Well, it was my roommate's scanner and I didn't know how to use it. So basically, I threw an auto contrast on here to try to make it a little cleaner. This is where it was before, and this is where we are now. After you're finished taking the image or the scan of your drawing, you're gonna bring it into Adobe Illustrator and then click Image Trace. Adobe is gonna do its best to take those black lines and turn it into a more clean, contrasted graphic. So now I'm gonna bring it into Photoshop. I just default to like a 20 by 20 inch blank document. And then I'm gonna take this from Illustrator and drag it onto Photoshop because this is where I do more of my detail work. Now there is currently a white background on our actual photo. We have our background, which is currently locked. I'm gonna unlock it. And the image of the flowers is on top. When I click that eyeball, it shows up and goes away. I'm gonna click the eyeball on the background layer just so we can see that white background is still there and I wanna get rid of it. So now that I've brought this in here, I wanna right click and click rasterize layer because right now it's a smart vector and we can't work with that, we can't edit it. Don't ask me why, because I don't entirely know. But once we rasterize it, we can now edit it. We're gonna go to Magic Wand Tool and then click that white background and click Delete. Now I am gonna keep the layer underneath white in case I want a more clear workspace and I'm not looking at all these grids behind it. So after you rasterize and get rid of the background, we can start cleaning it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna clean it up using the black paintbrush, the white paintbrush, and the eraser tool. And I don't wanna clean it up too much because in this case I wanna keep the doodle look, but as you can see, some of the edges are a little bit rigid from my twitching hand, I guess, when I was painting, when I was drawing. I'm not smart. Okay, I just hooked up my external mouse because otherwise I was probably gonna go a little bit insane. No, I did. I did go a little insane. Here's before cleaning and here's after cleaning. I'm not sure if it was worth the mental strain I went through, but you can decide what's worth it for yours. Yesterday while editing, I found out the second two thirds of my narration had a buzzing in the mic. I think I didn't plug it in fully. So today I'm gonna redo that. I think I just shared in hopes of getting some sympathy. Okay, let's go. So just keep in mind, the cleaner your drawing is, the less cleanup you'll have to do, but that kind of goes without saying. So now I can grab a color and then take that paint bucket tool. And I'm gonna wanna make a new layer just so all of the paint bucket tool is on the same layer. Just that color can be altered on its own. As you can see, I can turn it on and off. And I wasn't feeling creative, so I took a color scheme from online. I wanted to go with some darker fall colors, I think. And then I can turn off that back layer to show that it's transparent. And sometimes I like to go to image and click trim, and that just brings it right up to the graphic. But things like greeting cards on Redbubble doesn't allow you to scale it. So I like to add just a little bit of padding around it at all times just to be safe, in case I'm not able to scale it and get that white space around it. So I'm gonna go to canvas and I'm gonna make it a little bit wider and a little bit taller. 
With PNG, it's able to have that transparent background and Redbubble suggested it because it's a smaller file size as well. One more thing that's pretty important is you're gonna wanna put kind of a bright stroke around the edges of all of your graphics. So that way you can see where those extra dots are and where those extra lines are because it'll make it a lot more evident since that stroke goes around every aspect of it. So I make it like a bright red or a hot pink. And then you wanna make it a little bit thick. And here it's not bad at all. You can just see a little bit of things jetting out from the graphic, just like a dot pretty much. And in many cases it'll be a lot worse. It'll be lines and dots depending on how clean things are. So you're just gonna wanna clean those up with the eraser tool. And this one wasn't bad at all. So then double click the layer, unclick stroke, and then just save again. And here is the finished product for the flowers. Now for watercolor paintings or colored drawings. With any of your forms of physical art, specifically watercolor paintings, you can always skip the image trace option on Adobe Illustrator if you want it to look more raw, because basically it's simplifying it, but there are different levels of simplified, so I think in many cases it can be really helpful. Again, for art with color, just take a good quality image of it or scan it. This time I'm gonna show you additional options because there's color on this. I'm not gonna wanna simplify it too much, but there are different levels and I'll show you those. Now with this leaf watercolor image, there's gonna be a lot of other image trace options I'm gonna show you. There are five that I'm going to test out with this image. So right up there, you'll see image trace. And with the drop down, you're gonna see quite a few options. I'm gonna show you high fidelity, low fidelity, three color, six color, and 16 color. Down below, a lot of those are oriented towards black and white. For example, silhouette, I'll show you. That's not gonna work out with this one. Now, if I just click image trace, because there's not a lot of contrast, you're gonna end up seeing some white in it. But if I were to make it all darker, then it probably would have been a little bit cleaner. But that's not what I'm going for for this one. I'm gonna apply the first five options, which are color oriented to our leaves. High fidelity is going to be very similar to the original image. Low fidelity, I think is a really good level, especially for this one. It has just enough detail. So I'm actually gonna go with low fidelity when I'm moving forward with the tutorial. Three color, you definitely want something more basic. And in this case, it grabbed that background area because there was actually a lot of contrast with that. So I just got dark pastel moss green, a gray and an off white, which is definitely not ideal for this. But if you have a lot fewer colors and you want it simplified, then three color can work for some cases. Six color, again, it chooses six colors that are most prominent and it can work sometimes, but definitely not in this case. And 16 colors, interesting. There's quite a few colors, but sometimes random colors are chosen. Like you can see some gray within the leaves and it's all just a program doing it. So it can be kind of surprising what it ends up emphasizing. And you can also clean it up a little bit if you wanted to go with 16 color, like in this case, you can always edit a little bit too. But I'm gonna go with low fidelity. For the example with color, I used my various watercolor leaves and I did click image auto contrast to see if that would make it easier to work with the background, but I at least didn't want it that dark for now. So I just clicked with the magic wand tool right on the kind of top area with all that white. And it was able to just grab all the white, but we'll have to do that darker grays afterwards. So I'm adding another layer and putting it right below the current layer. And then I'm gonna take the paint bucket tool and make that white. That way it's gonna be more contrasted and we can see what we're working with easier without a grid behind it. So now I'm able to take the magic wand and get those grays. So it wasn't all at once, but I was able to get the whites and the grays. And now with stroke, again, we're gonna be able to clean up those edges, the ones we weren't able to grab before. And when it comes to watercolor, it's yeah, just more likely that there's gonna be imperfections like dots and lines. And you can see there was that horizontal and that vertical line just from the edge that weren't quite noticed yet. So just grabbing all of those imperfections and it's honestly kind of fun when you have that bright stroke, it's nice because it helps you a lot with finding those imperfections. And then turn the stroke off. And then you can click the polygon lasso tool or right above it, that rectangle marquee tool. Or you can just do the lasso tool that you'll see in the same area as polygon lasso tool. So 
I'm actually just going to use the lasso tool. So I'm clicking that polygon lasso tool and just bringing it right over to lasso tool. And that one you just kind of draw on your own. It's not going to be click by click. So I'm just grabbing this one chain of leaves. And I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it and it automatically creates its own new layer. And then I'm going to take the eyeball off so we don't see that layer for now. Go back to the original and I'm actually going to use this polygon lasso tool now. That's click by click and it's going to be more of a geometric way of grabbing it. And then I do control D to get that, um, that line off, the dotted line. And now that it's on its own layer, we can just alter that on its own. Brightness, color, contrast, all of that stuff. You can turn it blue, turn it purple, whatever you want but I'm not gonna do that. And when it's on its own layer, you're able to move it around and make sure the gaps between each are enough. Or when you just select each one, you're able to move them around on your own. For example, this one, I'm just using polygon lasso tool, keeping it on the same layer, but now that it's selected and you see that, that dashed line around it, I'm able to move it and just be careful with that padding and be able to create enough white space in between each and I'm going to make the canvas size a little wider so we can have padding around all of it, even if it's just a little bit of padding. And then this one down here, I'm gonna use just that lasso tool again, and you can see it's that same layer, but I'm still able to just edit that on my own. I'm able to increase brightness a little bit and just those small changes on just specific ones. And I'm gonna increase the saturation on that last chain of leaves a little bit. And then I'm gonna go down to that white layer. I took the eyeball off of the white layer, so we just have the transparent background. We wanna make sure that it's just transparent before we export. And then I'm gonna export as PNG again. And this is the final image for the leaves. You can just keep saving the Photoshop file and then export as PNG at the very end. I just like thought I was finished a couple times, so that's why I did that and just make sure that white background's gone by then. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and consider turning on notifications and I'll see you next time. Bye. And I went, and I went down to- <clears throat>